Hi everyone, Larry Graves here. Uh, in the recent past I've talked about these newsletters that I used to do. And so I'll talk a little bit about them and then I'll read a story or two. Now, I've been a creative person for years, but I think it took me a long time to realize I was creative. I think I started being creative, well, I started being creative when I was like 17. 58, 68, 70. yeah, 17, 18, I started writing poetry. And I used to write quite a lot of poetry, most of it's gone now. But I remember once I had a batch of my poems and I gave to my second oldest brother to read. And a few days later, he gives them back to me, and I don't know, no idea what he was going to say. I didn't have very much confidence in, in myself, that's for sure. And he said, they're very depressing. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and then I would reread them and say, yeah, he's right, because they weren't mainly funny poetry. I, I did write funny poetry too, but yeah, they were kind of uh, depressing. So during the 80s I would uh, occasionally write poetry, and then in the 90s, probably about 93, I wrote a story. My first and really only kind of serious, dramatic story. And uh, I remember giving it to my, uh, my nephew to read, because he was a very smart person. And he said it was good. I mean, he gave me some cri uh, critical feedback also, because I wasn't a perfect writer. But he said it was good, and that gave me some confidence. And and there it is, there, The Adventures of Lenny. And it's basically about a serial killer. I mean, it does have some kind of dark humor in it, but... Yeah. Walking down the darkening path ahead of her, Janice knew that in, in only a few minutes she would be safe in the luxury of her home. She swore that through her thick winter coat she could hear her heart beating quicker and quicker and louder and louder than the very steps beneath her. Something was not right, but she had the very same finding feelings before, so she let out a little nervous giggle and forced herself to calm down. This is Dullsville, USA, she murmured as she slowed down her pace. Then it goes on from there. Maybe someday I'll read the whole story. If I get more than 100 comments saying, please read the whole story. <clears throat> then I would uh, j just, not even f funny stories, just kind of, you know, being creative, I guess. This little one here is called The Letters Sent. No one knows his name, yet they all know he is mad, crazy, insane. He writes letters to them often. He has already murdered three that he writes to. There are only four left. Has he written to you? I know these people are scared, frightened, paranoid. The letters he writes are bizarre. He never finishes the letters that are sent. They just stop all of them. That's it. And if some of you remember the O.J. Simpson trial, this was around the, the time of that when I wrote some of these. And this is just a little short one. Humor. Sort of. O.J. Simpson newsflash. When O.J. Simpson was a young lad, he used to be terrible at misplacing things, O.J.'s mother recalls. There would not be a day that went by without him losing something. If I close my eyes, I can still hear him shouting, Where are my bloody gloves? 
and uh, I did a math quiz here. Tom had six brothers and five sisters. Three brothers and two sisters were married. One brother was divorced and three sisters were pregnant. Tom was single and unemployed. Four of his sisters were nurses. Two of Tom's brothers were lawyers. If Tom's parents drove 110 miles and parked, do you think they should have used birth control? At least I was trying to be creative. Here's another one. This one uh, I think is funny, but you may not. See, if I put the paper back here, I can actually read it. I, I have bifocals, but I never really... Up close, I usually just take the glasses off, which I will do now. The whole scoop. Peter was hungry for an ice cream cone. The whole scoop. Peter was hungry for an ice cream cone. He and his friend Rick walked the two-mile journey to Victor's ice cream castle. Even though Victor had every type of flavor imaginable, Peter ordered a triple scoop of good old vanilla ice cream. His friend decided on a single scoop of maple walnut. Peter could hardly wait to bite into the cold, soothing ice cream. As they left the store and proceeded down the road, Peter noticed that his three scoops were way off balance. He knew he had to take command of the situation and get some major tongue work going. Rick was laughing, but to Peter, this was a life and death situation. As his tongue flickered around the cone, all three, scoop, all three scoops jumped out of the cone and landed with a major splat on the gravel road. Peter was furious. Rick knew not to laugh or he'd be on the road with the scoops. Peter stormed back to the store. Sir, I just purchased a three-scoop ice cream cone. You did not place the scoops properly in the cone, and I lost all of the ice cream on the road outside. With a sinister chuckle, Victor whispered, Go back outside and scoop up what you can. This has happened before. I'll just place it in the Rocky Road container. And so, there's one of the covers of one of my newsletters. And I, I used to just give this to family and friends. Not too many people saw it, which is maybe a good thing. But I used to bring them to my work. And I remember my boss coming out after reading one of the newsletters saying to me, What are you doing working here? <laughs> which is a compliment, I guess. <laughs> Some of this is kind of inappropriate, but I mean, I guess I was a little more immature back in the day. This one is on Michael Jackson, when there were reports about him, of course. I'll have to read that to you, but there's the... And I didn't, I just grabbed that from the internet. I don't know if you can actually read that. But it says, For your birthday, he's talking to his son, For your birthday, you're spending the weekend with Michael Jackson at his mansion. And the boy replies, Okay, Dad, but I'm wearing a suit of armor. More inappropriate humor. Mu musicians and their favorite songs. Stevie Wonder. I think my favorite song of all time is probably The Sounds of Silence by Simon and Garfunkel. In fact, it seems every morning when I stumble out of bed, I'm singing, Hello darkness, my old friend, I've come to talk to you again. <laughs> and there's another newsletter. Some of these I find funny, you know, looking have, having not read them in quite a while, and other, other ones not so much. This one here. The Society of Violent People is for individuals that need to communicate in an open forum on problems associated with the seldom heard of mental disorder. Meetings are held every Tuesday afternoon at precisely 3 p.m. at the Church of Latter-day Sinners. 
individuals who come to the meeting without their ID card or are late will be shot on site. And I'll end this with, uh, this is likely one of my first humorous stories, and then I got into writing actual true uh, humorous stories from my family, like camping trips and everything. But this one is called The Light at the End of the Tunnel. So I'll read that to you, and hopefully there's a person or two still watching. The Light at the End of the Tunnel. There have been many books and television shows on life after death. I've always had an interest in all of this, although I'd prefer to stay alive for a few more years before I witness firsthand what death is like. What concerns me about my own death is the tunnel. No one has died has really described the tunnel in detail. Is it a big tunnel? Is it a small tunnel? God forbid it isn't a subway tunnel with graffiti all down the walls. God rules, dude. How long is this tunnel? After the life I've had, I wouldn't want it to be a long journey to the light. I don't think I'd have the energy. I'd be dead tired. Gets funnier. What about the light itself? People are known to exaggerate. Instead of this immensely powerful light, that is brighter than the sun, it's probably the total opposite. I bet it's just some old guy holding a lamp with a 40-watt bulb in it, and he's standing by a toll booth. It'll be harder than hell for me to find this light. I'm very bad with directions. Knowing my luck, I'd see the light and start running towards it. At the last second, I'd notice the flame shooting up from hell, and it would be, and it would be too late for me to go the other way. There are many questions that must be asked. What exactly is heaven? Will I come face to face with all of with the Almighty? Is there cable? Can I bring my television remote control with me? There are certain people that I wouldn't want in heaven. If I was stuck in heaven with these people, I'd kill myself. I also think there are at least three levels to heaven. The first level is for all of the people who live their life for the benefit of helping the, their fellow man. People like priests, nuns, missionaries, and prostitutes. The second level would be for anyone that makes over $100,000 per year without cheating on their taxes. The third level worries me. This is the level I'm going to. This is the level I'd be going to. This is also the level that all of the cockroaches go to. It's a filthy level. All the maids are on the first and second levels. There will be so many people crammed on this level that when I get there, I bet there won't be room for me and they'll have to make a fourth level. Supposedly, when I pass on, I will be meeting dearly departed friends and family who I haven't seen in years. What I can't live with, or die with, is the fact that there are certain people I might not want to see again. What if I had a perverted uncle or something? I wouldn't want him greeting me with a big grin on his face. Let's get back to the tunnel. I think that certain individuals I think that certain individuals are going to end up being stuck in the dark for quite a while. I pity someone like Stevie Wonder. I like Stevie Wonder jokes back then. I pity someone like Stevie Wonder. How is he supposed to go to the light at the end of the tunnel when the poor bugger can't see? Unless, of course, the walls are in braille and he feels his way to the light. Knowing my luck, he'd find his way to the light faster than I ever would. I'm also ready to be disappointed when I first set my eyes on heaven. What if my first vision of heaven is one of beauty and joy? Yet the McDonald's sign ruins it all. Anyway, if any one of my readers ever experiences death and lives to tell about it, I would love to hear from you. By the way, remember to put in a good word for me while you're there.
So that's it. Just some of my semi-humorous stories. I hope some of you enjoyed it, and if you did, please leave a thumbs up and, of course, a comment. That's a thumbs down. And a comment below. Bye.